uh, basically what what the CETA project is doing is trying to trying and actually collecting uh, data about all archaeological excavation done in Rome. So as you can imagine, it's a huge project. I, I would say the huge project uh, you, you can think about. And we're also going through. Uh, very old data like excavations done in the 19th century and digitizing uh, uh, old site plans and of course <coughs> this project doesn't come out of nowhere it's the result of several uh, commissions that uh, started the idea of having a national uh, geographic information system for archaeological work for uh, the entire uh, state of course, this didn't work out, and uh, uh, at some point, uh, like they decided to focus on, on Rome. That was anyway a, a really uh, big uh, part of uh, of the project. And basically, what what they are also trying to do is to just not limit to the raw uh, data, but to, to put forward uh, a kind of a pipeline that goes from the raw data to the uh, visualizations and to the um, like outreach part of archaeological work. Uh, this of course has tremendous importance in Rome where uh, practically any kind of public work is uh, always delayed by several months or years because of the archaeology that is underground so in a way uh, working on this kind of project can alleviate the issues that are typically associated with doing works that range from the new tube uh, network to very small uh, works like just water pipelines and, and things like this so you see here uh, some different types of the data they work with and the reconstructions they do uh, and the thing is that most of the of the work that, that they do is made is of course digitized, but that, that's obvious, and it's uh, made available on three separate layers of uh, let's say mm, detail and of uh, also understanding. So th it's geared towards different uh, levels of expertise. Uh, so the, the first one, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, these are really three separate levels. Uh, well, I should go in, in, into more detail probably here, but basically they, they start from uh, big complexes, like where you have information about, for example, uh, a building from the Roman period or a building from the medieval period, and then you go into the details up, down, um, sorry, uh, until the single context or about the finds or about uh, uh, the, um, the archaeological um, intervention that made it possible to, to recover some, some of this data. And so uh, the idea, uh, well, one of the reasons why I am presenting this is that I am a colleague of theirs, even though I work in a very uh, different situation and like small scale compared to Rome, uh, is that this system, which is uh, web-based, does WebJS uh, at, the, at the basis, is also uh, useful for the daily work of the archaeological service. So uh, my colleagues in the archaeological service in Rome can use this uh, as a kind of uh, workbench, digital workbench, for all the work so they can see uh, what work needs to, needs to be done to move on with each uh, uh, administrative um, like um, act that is associated with uh, kind of public development or private uh, <coughs> development works. And here you see there are, uh, apart from the, from the web GIS, uh, you have also the, the academia.edu uh, mm, account where uh, they publish a lot of um, tutorials about the use of the system because uh, parts of this system are meant to be used by uh, professionals who are working uh, as contractors for private companies or are meant to be used by students who are studying specific uh, uh, 
subjects uh, from uh, from the archaeology prom. Um, so you see a bit of their work, which is really painstaking. They, they, they go on, they digitize, they scan all publications, they digitize the, the, the plans. So, and a lot of the efforts they make uh, is into uh, the correct positioning of the archaeological evidence. And in some cases, it's really, it's really difficult because uh, these uh, uh, works are maybe just positioned based on the name of the cadastral. A uh, lot, and perhaps that has changed over time. So you, you cannot find the cadastral map that they were looking at when they uh, used it to position the, the archaeological excavation. And so uh, basically, they're moving. They they, they already partly moved to an open archive of all these uh, documents, and. The idea, which uh, if you were, for example, uh, and the, the talks by Gabriele Gattiglia about the MAP project is a, a bit more nuanced in this case. And uh, they're advocating three separate layers about uh, the ecological data. The first one is the most generic, and they think that the information is uh, simple and mm, let's say mm, generic enough to be uh, released under a CC0 license, so basically in the public domain. Uh, of course, we're speaking about very generic data like the boundaries of an excavation area or something like this. And, and then we go into the details, and the, the licenses basically become more. No? Yeah. The licenses become slightly more restrictive because uh, there's the work done by the archaeologists in producing the actual archaeological documentation and in producing site plans, photographs, and, and so on, uh, still allowing uh, any kind of uh, deriv derivative work. Of course, I mean, you, you can imagine. Uh, the amount of possibilities from uh, this huge uh, database. And so these are different examples of the baths of Caracalla. And well, this is quite boring, but anyway, this is not done just on, on a whim, but it's done within the framework of several uh, regulations that regulate both uh, Italian public administration at large and uh, archaeological work specifically. Uh, so, in a sense, uh, when there are some state offices like the Archaeological Service in Rome that want to push the boundaries of what can be shared online and what uh, can be done by sharing this data, there's space for doing this. But there's still no strict requirements, so it's not like everybody in Italy is doing this right now. It's happening, it's starting to happen, more or less, in a very uh, random uh, pattern. But, I mean, the, the, the base for, for moving forward is that. And so, uh, this is a kind of uh, summary graph about all the different actors of, of this uh, um, huge framework. And, of course, it's, it's not I mean, the role of local authorities, citizens, is not secondary. Uh, they think that archaeological data uh, can have a role in uh, the reappropriation of archaeological heritage by citizens. And this is very important because, it, it, okay, in, in Rome, there is a tendency by a part of the, of the population to think that yeah, archaeology is just a huge problem because they have already enough archaeology, they have already enough uh, monuments to generate uh, millions of tourists every year. So uh, these uh, data can serve uh, a function for citizens to appropriate this uh, archaeological heritage, especially in 
in the kind in the situation of like I don't know marginal neighborhoods. There are, I mean, Rome is not just a big monumental center. Rome is uh, much more than that. So there are uh, many ecological areas in in, in neighborhoods that are uh, less than uh, spectacular. Let's say so uh, it can serve uh, this uh, uh, civil purpose, and of course as all the uh, ability of uh, uh, developers to know in advance what areas would be more likely to uh, generate uh, uh, archaeological findings and and so on. And well, this is uh, 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 an extended version of what I summarized before. Uh, there's a kind of uh, big. Uh, question about the ownership, the, the, the intellectual ownership of this data, because in some cases it's so old that the original authors are totally uh, in the public domain. At the same time, uh, there was a lot of effort in uh, digitizing the work, so they're kind of uh, creating a new copyright, but they're giving it away by using the Creative Commons licenses. Uh, at the same time, uh, there's a uh, problem of current work that is done by uh, archaeologists just uh, I'm, I'm working on the contract. And what happens with the data that is the outcome of this uh, current uh, uh, archaeology? Or in some cases, we have, let's say, the problem of uh, the archaeological service that wants to keep copyright for themselves. Uh, especially uh, the the various uh, the, the well, my colleagues, so to say, that want to keep the cover for, for, for themselves. So they they should be just those who keep uh, things under control and not the real uh, owners of any intellectual right. Uh, and okay, this is just a reiteration of of this uh, of this topic and. That's it. So, thank you. Uh, if you have any like generic question, I can try and answer, of course. But otherwise, you have the, I think yes, all the contacts are here. They have a Facebook page, so they'll be happy, I think, to answer any question you have.